Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Happy Monday. Hope everybody is doing okay. Before we get into uh, the video, uh, if you can be so kind, like uh, like the video, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Come on board on that never-ending journey to, well, to what we want to be. is a full-time, part-time, any type of trader, but being very responsible uh, in the process. So if you watched uh, the weekend video, uh, we talked about this inverted hammer that we had on Friday, kind of like triple, again, I didn't want to use the word triple top, but a triple pause. Usually when you get this inverted type of hammer, selling probably will follow. So our whole game plan today, and we'll get to the pivots, uh, primarily semiconductors, especially in the morning, uh, SMCI, uh, NVIDIA, so forth and so on. They were on our sell schedule, right? Sell schedule because, again, when you look at the inverted hammer on the Qs and you look at uh, the SMHs, right? And you look at the SMHs, they kind of were, you know, mirror images of each other. So uh, futures, you know, gapped up a little bit today, nothing crazy. And then slowly but surely, you started seeing, you know, a lot of weakness uh, in the semiconductors. You started seeing SMCI go red. You started seeing AMD go red. You started seeing Meta go red. Nothing to do with semiconductors, but Meta go red. You started seeing uh, NVIDIA go red. And you're like, oh, okay, here we go. You know, our, our thesis was correct. Um, you know, let's watch these things confirm. And the first part of the day, that's exactly what happened. If you look at the QQQs that we talked about uh, in last night's video, let's watch the 478 level. You guys remember 478, 478, 478? So the Qs take out 478, right? They take out 478, and there's like a big avalanche of selling. You know, for all you guys who are trading today, especially at the open, you saw this magnificent waterfall come in. You're like, wow, this is great, right? This is absolutely great. Everything at the same time. NVIDIA, SMCI, um, uh, Meta, I, all these semiconductors, with the exception of Avago, really started coming in. You're like, wow, okay, there we go, right? This is a, a start of a whole selling cycle today. And to the bull's credit, again, we'll get to the pivots in a second, to the bull's credit, they stepped up. You know, they stepped up. Um, you know, they really didn't step up on any major daily level, but they did step up. And not only did they hold ground and didn't get back to last weekend's high, uh, last week's high, but they reclaimed back the five-day moving average, which was super bullish. And if you look at today's uh, day, uh, it was literally the, the tale of two cities or the tale of two tapes. You had massive selling right at the open, uh, only to stabilize. And a lot of the beta names, you know, including the Apples of the world, the Microsofts of the world, got really, really strong and took the cues into uh, positive territory. Uh, the storyline continues to be uh, Tesla. If you guys remember, uh, you know, and I see this, you know, I saw this today a number of times. And they're like, you know, you see this all over social media. Tesla broke out today. Tesla, Tesla didn't break out today, guys. This is all big one follow through. You can make a case, right? Not everything's a breakout. Okay, it's all, there's only one breakout on the chart. Everything else is everything else is continuation. So you can make a, a, a technical case that this 189 level was a very very important level. You can make a very very strong case. The highs of Elon Musk's vote for his pay package was very, very important. You can also make a case above the April 29 highs of 199, right? That's the breakout area. Those are the areas that are technically ready to take control. But you're talking about up here, right? You're talking about 207, 28, 29, 210, 212, 213. Guys, this is just one big continuation level. And the one thing that you always have to remember is there's only one breakout, right? There's literally one breakout of the chart. And again, let's just even use the April 29 as the point of reference. Again, we talked about these areas uh, in nauseam for, for weeks and months, uh, but everything else is continuation. And always keep this in mind. The further a stock or ETF or whatever asset class you're trading, the further it is away from the breakout, the higher probability the stock will pull in. Having said that, right? Having said that, uh, Tesla right now is in a major, major runaway train. 
Uh, if you guys remember last week, because they have tomorrow uh, delivery, uh, they have delivery numbers coming out, I think tomorrow before pre-market. So that's going to be very interesting. But if you guys saw what happened last week, there was two separate firms. And I think we reiterated this point on the weekend update that two brokerages, they downgraded, they trimmed the estimates for the delivery numbers. And what did Tesla do last week? It rallied. And not only did it rally, it actually broke out. So tomorrow morning, you're going to get delivery numbers out of Tesla. If I'm a betting man, and I'm not, right? But if I'm a betting man, here's what I think is going to happen. Again, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But again, here's my opinion. Don't we at least have to have an opinion, have to have uh, a course of action that if it does happen, we can trade off of? So here's my opinion. Here's my two cents. You could take it to leave it. I have no idea. If the numbers come in and they're surprisingly good, of course, Tesla is going to continue this rally, right? The stock is on a runaway train right now, super duper strong. They're coming for nonstop, guys, for the 220s, 225 weeklies. The major, major uh, bets that we saw were a little bit further out. They were coming with a lot of size, folks, for the November 265 calls. So if the delivery numbers surprise, of course, the, the Tesla rally continues. Here's where it gets a little tricky, right? Let's say the numbers come in light, right? The numbers are right. And these brokers who downgraded uh, their, their numbers and they trimmed their numbers last week, let's just say they're right. What I think is going to happen is even if the initial reaction is red, right? Let's just say they take down Tesla two, three, four points. What I think is going to happen is there's a higher probability that the buyers will come in on the dip, engulf the initial, you know, the initial selling, reclaim back the 206 level that we talked about on the, on the weekend video and start pushing today's highs. Again, I'm, a, I'm not a betting man. But if, if I had to kind of play this out in my head and kind of see how the market is going to react and kind of how we've seen this movie before, I do think if obviously if it's going to be a good number, they're going to rally the stock. If it's going to be a bad number, the initial knee-jerk reaction is going to be to sell. And then ultimately what I think the bulls are going to do is going to defend that level and take back the stock at least green once. We'll see. You know, we'll see exactly how that plays out. Uh, interesting development today, right? Interesting development today in the Hello Kitty world. Obviously, it's not Hello Kitty, but I'd like to use the word Hello Kitty, right? You have Kitty, obviously, a monster shareholder in GameStop. Uh, GameStop, we've seen now in the last, you know, two weeks or so, kind of lose its luster every single time it tried to rally. It got stuffed. So if you guys remember last week, I think it was either Thursday or Friday, um, Roaring Kitty tweeted out a picture of a dog, right? And a lot of these, you know, pet food stocks, they started popping. But one stock that started popping last week, I think I was either Thursday or Friday, was Chewy. And the reason why Chewy popped last Friday to almost the $40, because the uh, the relationship, the CEO of Chewy is the CEO, I believe, of GameStop. So there was a lot of people, a lot of speculation, and they drove the stock up last week. People chased and then they drilled the stock down. So this morning you woke up and they confirmed, right? There was a filing, I believe Roaring Kitty, uh, I think amassed a 6% position in the stock. The stock gapped up 20%. And just like last week, they sold it again. They a lot of crazy stuff here. So guys, just remember, you know, you have folk heroes on the internet. You have traders you looked up to on the internet. Remember the key word. It's on the internet. You know, trade technically. Don't chase news. Don't chase tweets. Don't chase nonsense. Be smart about things, right? Maybe it worked. Maybe it wouldn't work. But again, you, you don't want to be in the maybe business. You don't want to ever put on a trade and hopefully the stock works out. You should have high probability in your disposal right in front of you because again, these levels are super important. The stock doesn't wake up magically Stocks have to reclaim major levels, especially macro levels. So when you see somebody that you look up to tweet something and you're chasing, you're chasing too late, right? You're chasing too late. And the optimal word here is you're chasing. Don't chase, right? Have the, you know, have the edge, keep the edge and wait for that edge uh, to confirm. Other than that, you have a pretty mixed bag here. Semiconductors, like we talked about in the weekend video, they got hit, right? Let's go through, you know, let's go through uh, some of the pivots today. Uh, again, primarily... 
everything was to the downside today. And it played out that way perfectly in the morning. Like we you know we talked about in the video, uh, Disney, right? We talked about Disney uh, 9838, the builds below can flush. Not a huge move yet on Disney, but here is Disney, right? Lost the 200 day moving average is the lowest close uh, below, you know, below the 200 day moving average. So again, you know, again, it's not going to be like a Tesla type of move, but this is the first close below uh, the 200 day for Disney. Uh, Nvidia got hit, man. It really, really got hit. Congratulations to all you guys who caught it. 122.60. If it builds below, can flush. Guys, look at the move on Nvidia this morning. It gave us like a really fast three dollar candle. I know that I know my my charts are all messed up, but you know if you look at Nvidia today, it took out this whole range here and went from 22.60 all the way down to like 18 and change. So really, really great move on Nvidia. They started taking them one by one. The one stock that held was Microsoft in the kind of reverse course. Uh, Uber uh, never came close to confirming to the upside. Uh, CENX never confirmed the 50-day moving average. SMCI got hit really, really hard. Congratulations for you guys who caught this as well. Uh, 8.15, if it builds below, can flush. Guys, look at the move on SMCI this morning. Right, look at this move here. Look, look at look at the 60-minute move here. It lost the 8.15 level, right? It lost the whole 8.15 level. And look what the stock did. Is it 8.15? 815 went all the way down to 773. Great, great move. So, you know, we had a big, big, you know, really heavy game plan coming into today. It played out tremendously in the morning. Then it just kind of just grinded everything back up towards the end of the day. Uh, 78, again, like we talked about in the video, 478 level uh, on uh, the queues. You know, they went down about two bucks before a big, big recovery. But again, nice move on the queues. Uh, Chewy, you know, I was actually looking at Chewy to the upside at one point, and obviously it never got there. And here's some other big moves to the downside. You had Meta 503.84. If it builds below, can see 499. Forget about 499, right? Meta got smashed today before a beautiful reversal. But look at the move here. Here is the 503.80s. Meta went all the way down to 493. I mean, this thing got smoked in a massive, massive reversal there. And obviously, the one, the only, the continuation of this massive breakout was Tesla 20380 needs to confirm opening range highs. And Tesla went Tesla, right? Tesla went Tesla. Here is the 20380s, the opening range highs. And Tesla went all the way up to uh, 213. Again, massive call buying. Uh, tomorrow, pre-market, you have your delivery numbers Let's see what happens again. Uh, gun to my head. I think if it, they do come light on estimates, I do believe there will be some sort of rug pull, but that rug pull will be defended by shareholders, right? By investors, by traders. We'll see if it plays out that way. Again, I have no idea. Again, only thing we could do is be prepared for it. Other than that, guys, business as usual. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody's prepared for tomorrow. Let me give you guys a couple of names that I am watching for tomorrow. I really like Mara. I do. I like Mara. It's not really one of the first names that's going to pop into my mind. But boy, look at this chart here on Mara, guys. This is now a month, month and a half distribution on Mara. This looks good. If Bitcoin continues, uh, if Bitcoin continues to uh, do well, this is a name. Uh, you definitely need to pay attention for tomorrow. Good option flow uh, coming into the name. Uh, look at a name like Avago, right? Avago had a huge, huge rally on Friday, reclaimed today's channels. Guys, they were coming, if you guys remember, I don't know if I mentioned this on the weekend update, but there was two separate bets on Friday. Uh, they were coming for the July 19th expiration, 1650s and 1700 calls with a total premium of $5 million. Keep an eye on this thing uh, as well. Uh, Microsoft held up very, very well. Let's see if Microsoft could take out last week's highs. And GameStop, right? GameStop today stopped right at the 50-day moving average. Everybody see that? That's the light blue line. Here's where, again, technical analysis becomes your friend. Uh, again, if you're brand new to the channel uh, or you've been following me for a long time, you kind of know above the 50-day is bullish, risk on. Below the 50-day is bearish. So guys, watch GameStop. They could confirm the 50-day moving average tomorrow. Uh, this thing can go lower. And last but not least, look at Shopify, right? Look at Shopify. Got the wrong symbol. Uh, oops, why can't it? Where's my... Uh, oh. There we go. 
Shopify, right? Shopify has held the bottom of the range here three separate times on the 20 day support. If Shopify loses this 20 day support in the next day or so, this thing has lower prices. Other than that, folks, hope everybody is doing well. God bless. Stay working. Put your head down. Again, it's not going to happen magically in a week, in a year, in three months. Sometimes it does take time, but the ultimate equalizer is technical analysis. God bless, folks. Have a great night. And with God's help, I'll see you on the field tomorrow.